I love history. I love history because there's so much that we can learn from the past heroes of our faith. We kind of look early back in the get-go, Jesus Christ. By the time of crucifixion, there were 12 disciples that were ready to be commissioned. We step into the book of Acts and we see in the early church about 120 of them came to know the Lord. By the end of Acts, we see that Jesus commissioned the disciples to be a witness in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and then to Asia Minor, to the Macedonia, and to the Adrian Sea, and all the way to Rome. 300 years later, 380, right before Constantine, sociologist says that there were approximately 6 million Christians by that time. Being commissioned by Jesus himself, sealed by the Holy Spirit that drove them by given the task by the Advocate, the Father. The world was changed by that commission. Now you may be asking, why that doesn't seem to match up with what we see today in our churches. There's been many studies and many done, but what's interesting, just coming from a mathematical statistical s study of it, 300 years of a study of a decade of growth is actually about 40%. If we see that annual growth, that's about only 4% of annual growth. That seems very doable to me. It's very impressive but not so impressive to the point that's not doable. Unfortunately, churches are known for just being notorious for being stagnant. As we understand, churches that multiply understands that multiplication begins with discipleship. A church that are multiplying is unstoppable. So the question perhaps is why? From a leadership standpoint, uh, part of the reason is that because we are not really doing well equipping the people. John Maxwell said it well. He says the reason that leaders don't want to empower younger people, there are three reasons. One, job security. Second, resistance to change. Third, a lack of self-value. So part of the reason that the discipleship is ha not happening, it may be a, a leadership issue. Because if you have a leadership problem, you have a discipleship problem. And if you have a discipleship problem, you have a leadership problem. So we've got to begin to understand that the, the task of leaders is not to call people to do the work or worse, do it ourselves. The job of the leader is to equip, to train, to coach these generation of people. Because two things are happening, as Robbie Gallaty would say. We're either fumbling the ball of discipleship or we're running with passion to pass it on to the next generation. The job is for us to not do the job, but to develop the next generation. Because I guarantee you, God is not going to be impressed with how big our building is. God's not going to be impressed with how much money we made or how many programs we have executed. But what's going to really matter is this. Did we make Jesus' last words our first work? In essence, did we make Jesus' last words, therefore go make disciples of all nations, or first and foremost of our work? Hopefully we can turn to Jesus and say, yes, we did. And he will say, well done, good and faithful servant. Thanks for watching our videos. You can submit your questions or your thoughts by email, Twitter, or comment section below. Don't forget to like our Facebook page to enter into a drawing for a free copy of our book. We will be giving away a copy of Ordinary Radicals mentioned in this video. Go to the description below and find out more how you can enter in. Subscribe today to find out next week's episode chapter on our book, Ordinary Radicals.